Hi there guys, welcome back to the Eastbourne Fisherman. Today we're going to talk about mackerel fishing. Now mackerel fishing is absolutely fantastic. It's great for uh, adults and children alike. Uh, so this video will cover uh, the basics of rod, reel, um, you know, what, what line to kind of use, uh, the different kinds of mackerel feathers that are available, which ones are good, which ones aren't so good, um, whether or not to use wedges on the bottom or weights. And we'll just cover a, a vast array to hopefully give you all the information you need about successfully going out and catching yourself some mackerel which are absolutely fantastic fish and they taste beautiful. Right, so let's first off start about equipment. So what kind of equipment are we going to need? So to start off with, the best thing I can advise you to is to head down to your local tackle shop, talk to a tackle dealer and uh, grab yourself a, uh, a combo from a tackle shop. Uh, realistically, combos from the tackle shops range from anything from £40 up to £50, depending on what you want to buy and what you, know, what you want to spend yourself. But definitely go down to your local tackle shop, have a chat with the owner, the proprietor and um, see what they suggest. Um, nine times out of ten you'll get a rod, a reel, uh, some feathers and some weights so you'll be ready to fish um, and you know, that, that, that's, that's what you want really, you just want to be able to get out, fish and have a good time because uh, macro fishing is absolutely fantastic and it's great for children um, and adults alike like we said previously. So the rod I'm using today is this one here, it's a Ron Thompson Sensor Flex, uh, I believe it's a ten foot rod and it casts four to eight ounces, obviously we're not going to cast that much with it today, it's a two piece rod. Um, and it, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice rod. It's, you know, it does what it needs to do. Um, reel wise, I've got uh, Jarvis Walker Mirage 8000. Now this is a slightly heavier reel. Um, usually some of the reels that come with the uh, combo setups are around about uh, 4000 in size, 5000, a little bit smaller than, than this reel here. This is quite a large reel. Uh, line wise, if you're buying it from a tackle shop, you'll get it preloaded with some uh, monofilament, which is usually around 25 pounds. Uh, in breaking strain, I would suggest adding a shock leader or getting the tackle shop to add a shock leader. They probably won't charge you much to do that, to be honest with you. But it just gives you a peace of mind, uh, knowing that you know you're not gonna you're gonna crack off, um, and it's a bit safety for everyone else on the beach as well. So the shock leader I've got in here is just a grease weasel shock leader, and that's 60 pounds in strength. Right. So when we're mackerel fishing, or when I'm mackerel fishing, I like to use these. Uh, they are uh, swivel clips or American snap swivels, some people call them. They're just a clip there with a swivel on the top. Um, that's what I like to, to, I like to use. Um, weights wise, um, torpedo leads like this shape in a two ounce are pretty popular with mackerel, people that want to fish for mackerel. Alternatively, you can use the other pear shaped lead there. I mean, there's not much difference between them obviously apart from the shape, um, but you know, it's, it, it is what you decide to do. That one's the most popular one, the torpedo. Feathers wise, uh, like I said, there's loads of different types of feathers. These ones are from BZS. Uh, you pick them up from your local tackle shop. Um, obviously, the, the tinsel and, and the colours uh, attract the fish there. Different ones there. And most of them will have these, uh, these uh, luminous beads on as well as an attractor. Uh, this one here, this the shrimp sort of one, uh, that one's been my, my favourite. I really do like using them and they seem to catch the, you know, catch the fish. And, um, you know, for me personally, um, as soon as you put them in the water, you know, the fish are bang on. This year has been absolutely phenomenal uh, with mackerel. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anything like it since I started fishing. I've had a chat with some of the other local lads and um, you know, they, they've said that the, 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 the mackerel sizes of the shoals that are here this year um, are absolutely insane. So yeah, if you want to get down here and give it a go, I suggest getting down here, um, you know, grabbing yourself some gear and you know, really giving it a go this year. Um, so these ones, on these ones, uh, some of them have loops which you will loop onto the weights and onto the onto the swivel i'll show you how to do that in a minute some of them will have just a swivel and a clip like that so you clip your lead onto the bottom there onto that clip and the swivel you clip onto the top of your clip or you tie it directly onto your line which i'll show you how to do in a second um, alternatives to using lead weights um, are by using the dexter wedge uh, these are proved pretty popular to put on the bottom of your mackerel feathers um, in turn they you know they should catch you an extra fish but most people put them on there to, to catch a bass so that's a dexter, dexter wedge they're not that expensive to buy you can buy a set of four for around about 10 quid so yeah so it's pretty handy to have them if you want to fish uh, or you want to target bass as well as mackerel right so what i'm going to do now is going to run up run through setting up the rod from scratch uh, so the first thing i like to do is take this part of the uh, the rod which is called the uh, the butt section um, as you'll see here you've got the uh, the real seat here which is adjustable so i'll wind that down and then what we'll do is you just place the reel in like that, hold it with your fingers underneath and then just tighten that up and that will lock your reel into place. The 
make sure that's nice and tight in there and it's not going not gonna to physically go anywhere. So that is the reel onto the rod. What we do now is we just take our top section or our tip section and we're just going to put that, locate that into the joint there. Then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to look down the rod eyes like that just to make sure they're all lined up and all nice and straight before I then put the line through the, the eyes of the rod. Uh, now take your time when you're doing this part, you don't want to miss any eyes because it is a pain in the backside when you've tied on your feathers and you realise that you have missed an eye. So what I do is unclip the line from the line clip there, um, loosen the drag on the top of the reel which is here so that pulls through freely and then all we're going to do is we're going to feed the line through the eyes of the fishing rod. Obviously this information is aimed at complete beginners. Um, people that you know don't really know what they're doing when it comes to mackerel fishing obviously if you know how to mackerel fish this probably won't be of any good great use to you um, but you know it's good to teach other people especially people who want to try it or people that have children and then they want to try it but you know they don't know where to start so yeah making sure the lines all the way through the rod eyes making sure you haven't missed any and now all we're going to do is we're going to take the line here Take our line clip here, or American swap, snap swivel, and all I'm going to do is I'm going to place the line through the eye, pinch it with my two fingers, wrap the line round six or seven times. Like that. Take the tag end, fold it, or place it through the bottom right next to the swivel or the last eye. Wet it with some saliva and then we're just going to pull that down which will form a knot like that which is there what we're going to do now is we're going to cut our tag end off like that and that is our clip attached to our line make sure you dispose of the tag end you don't want to leave any litter or rubbish on the beach so what we're going to do now is just take our feathers which are here slide them out the packet by taking the top off making sure you dispose of the rubbish like I said you don't want to leave any rubbish on the beach all we do now is we, uh, we pull the hooks free from the packaging and pull everything free. Just give it a good shake and that will separate the feathers there, like so. All we do now is you clip on, we, we take the snap swivel, we push it to one side, that will release it and then we put the swivel on, push it back in and that clips on tight there. Go to the other end, which is the uh, other clip. We clip our lead weight on the bottom like that, or our dextra wedge, whichever one you choose to use, and that is you ready to go fishing. Right, so if you end up with a rig that doesn't have clips on, like this one here, I'll show you what to do. I'm just gonna take it off of the cardboard backing. Like so, just shake it and it will come apart. Nice and easy, like that. So what you'll have is you'll have a loop at the top. I'm going to untangle this. Right, so what you do is you end up with a loop at the top and a loop at the bottom. So how would you know which way the rig goes? If you hold it like that, the tinsel should be facing down or on this end the shrimp is facing down and the hook's facing down. So this end here We'll just clip onto your clip there. Alternatively, you can tie your line onto there like we've shown you previously before. Um, at the bottom of the rig, where you put your lead or your spinner, or whatever you want to use, all you need to do is take the loop, feed it through the lead, like that. Then take the loop, put the lead through the loop, and then pull tight and that will hold your lead in place like that. When you want to release the lead all you do is push down on the loop, push the loop back through the lead and then that will release the lead from the rig. Another thing to do when you finish the session is just I like to wrap my rigs on rig winders I don't want to you know waste them if they're, if they're not broken or anything like that so just wrap it up on a rig winder like that. Just push the hooks into the foam then and that'll keep your rig nice and secure for your next session. If you do find that you have too many hooks on your string of feathers, uh, you can always cut one off 
um, and you know fish for slightly lesser mackerel if you if you, you know if you if you don't want to catch you know the number I mean this this is here is six feathers so I mean some people will cut a couple of these off and just catch three at a time depending on you know what you're fishing for whether you're fishing for bait or whether you're fishing for pleasure right so other questions I've been asked in the past is how will I know or when will I know to start mackerel fishing now mackerel season is uh, it varies through the year usually it's July August September is the uh, the main times when the mackerel shoals come in so how can we tell this so the, f the first telltale sign is that you'll see the sea boiling I'm just gonna add a video clip in now uh, to show you that Another telltale sign um, is, is that you'll see white bait washing up on the beach. Now what happens is the mackerel chase the white bait in big shoals um, onto the, into the front of the, uh, the beach itself and then the white bait have nowhere to go, which unfortunately they beach themselves on the beach. It happens every single year, it's nothing new, um, but unfortunately that's a way of life and that's how the food chain works. So the bigger fish are chasing the mackerel like the bass, uh, the mackerel are then chasing the smaller bait fish uh, like the sprats and the white bait the white bait then beach themselves um, and I'm just going to insert a clip of the white bait on the beach now so you can see again absolutely tons of white bait washing up on the beach the telltale sign that mackerel season has begun also you can look on various local Facebook pages um, with which people post catch reports uh, they will show you or tell you uh, give you an indication of when the mackerel when the mackerel season starts so you'll be able to know through that. Another place uh, which is an absolutely fantastic place to get information is from your local tackle shop as well. It is important to note the uh, minimum landing size of a mackerel, so it's quite important to take a ruler with you so you can measure out the fish that you're keeping. Uh, mackerel in the southern Ithaca um, are currently um, a minimum of 20 centimetres. Other areas and other fisheries um, are different, so please check with your local fishery uh, to see what is the retention size uh, within your uh, local fishery itself. Um, you can do that by visiting um, you know, the internet and searching for uh, your, your local IFCA. So it's important that we don't take too many fish that are undersized um, to, to you know, retain the fish stocks uh, for the next following year. Also another good thing to have on you is a pair of surgical forceps. These are absolutely fantastic just unhooking the fish and sometimes if you don't want to touch the fish you can actually unhook them by the side of the water by clipping that onto the hook and just shaking the fish off in the water. Some people say that um, if you touch a mackerel it causes them uh, harm. Uh, studies have found that um, people have tagged mackerel after handling them in the past and they've gone back absolutely fine. Uh, so I mean I wouldn't worry too much about handling them and then putting them back but it's best practice to um, if you're not what if you don't want to keep the fish to hold the rig and put this on the hook and then just shake the fish back into the water all right so when you catch a mackerel it's important if you want to keep it to keep it in a container um, today i'm using this bucket usually i'll bring a cool box uh, with a couple of ice packs in to keep the fish nice and cool um, if you're fishing at one area and then you're traveling to a, a, you know a, or if you're fishing down to eastbourne or a seaside area and then you're traveling back into the mainland uh, it is important to uh, to fillet the fish uh, before you take them home and I would, I would say to definitely put some ice packs in there to keep the fish cool um, otherwise you'll spoil the fish um, and it will just be absolutely awful and it will taste horrible and you can even you know risk uh, you know causing yourself harm if you don't store the fish correctly the best thing to do when you get home is to just wash the mackerel in cold water and then what I like to do is I like to wrap them if I'm keeping them for bait I'll keep them whole I won't bother filleting them and I'll just wash them in some cold water and then I'll wrap them individually in cling film and then I'll freeze them. If I want to eat the fish, uh, what I will do is I'll cut the head off, I'll, I'll, I'll cut the, head off the fish. I usually um, just take a pair of scissors or a sharp fillet knife, cut through the middle of the fish, open it out and remove the guts from the fish. Uh, do keep the heads of the fish if you, if you actually like fishing. Um, they are absolutely great bait in winter for things like bass and conger reel as well. So definitely keep the heads, freeze them and then use them over the winter as baits. Don't throw them away. Um, otherwise, you know, you, you'll get loads of maggots in your bin and, uh, you know, you'll be wasting a really good bait that you could potentially use throughout the winter. Right, so with all that said, the main thing to do when you're mackerel fishing is to have fun. So let's go and have a fish. I don't know if you can see that over there, guys, but the whole sea is boiling with mackerel. I've never seen the sea boil with mackerel so much. I cannot wait to get fishing.
There we go, then guys, another full string of mackerel there. These mackerel are really, really nice size mackerel actually. Another full string of mackerel guys. Yeah, look how many are. One, two, three, four, five, six mackerel. Absolutely fantastic. Right guys, so sometimes when you're fishing with mackerel your rig gets tangled. So all you want to do is just take a little bit of time. Just un you don't need to throw the rig away, it'll be absolutely fine. Just take some time untangling it. And it's back to normal. Dexter wedge on the bottom's proven really good today. It's definitely definitely a good one, just need a nice bass to go in my mackerel from the tea now, but we're doing good, we're doing alright. Bang back into another fish, I can't believe it. Actually, it's like full strings of chuck at the minute. And on this small rod, it's actually quite fun fishing. There's another full string, mackerel fishing at its finest, absolutely brilliant. Bang straight in, we're straight into another fish guys. This is insane fishing. Absolutely insane. Right, so we're going back out. So this is what I mean on the bottom of the floor. All the little white baits down there. That's what the mackerel are chasing. All the white bait are getting chased into the shore. And that's what the mackerel are eating. All over the front of the beach. When you cast out, obviously make sure that the line is coming out the top of the top of the rod eye there. Make sure the line's coming out the top of the rod eye, you don't want to snap the top of your rod. When you're all set, ready to go. Just flick the bail arm over, hold on to the line, swing it and then cast out. I mean we're not even going that far out. I mean we're just literally and we're already into a fish. We're already bang into a fish. I can't believe it, man. Fishing today is absolutely crazy. And on this light 10 foot rod, I'm actually quite enjoying it. It's actually given a really good fight, some of these mackerel. Look at them splashing in the water as we pull them in. There we go. They're coming up now coming up the beach again another full string of mackerel absolutely crazy you're gonna see it guys but look at that sea boiling in front absolutely freaking crazy look at it look at it all boiling over there that's what we're looking for the sea boiling like that that is a telltale sign that mackerel are in the in the area and we're bang straight into another one Yeah. 
see the mackerel coming back in now. Man, these mackerel are real big. They're really big fish. They're not like small mackerel, these are like 30 centimetre plus mackerel. These are big fish. So far it's been a fish and chuck, it's probably the best session I've had this year so far. Absolutely crazy. Whoa. There we go guys, that's what you call a full string of mackerel. Absolutely crazy. Full string of mackerel, absolutely fantastic. Absolutely beautiful evening to spend. Throw in a couple of leads for some mackerel fishing. Absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely stunning. Right guys, so we managed to catch a couple of fish today, some which we'll take home for bait and some which we will eat so at the end of the day it's not been a bad session whatsoever don't forget that if you're, if you're mackerel fishing please take all your rubbish home with you uh, please source your equipment when you're buying it from a local tag shop and support them as well and uh, please don't take more fish than what you what you physically need what you're going to eat or what you're going to use for bait make sure you fish sustainably and then hopefully we can protect the fish stocks for the future thanks very much for watching guys and i'll see you on the next one cheers <laughs>